I am the Chief Executive Officer of the Nassau County Industrial Development Agency, and I have been authorized to hold a public hearing. Today is March 16, 2021, and the time is now 3 p.m. Given the ongoing COVID-19 public health crisis and related executive orders issued by Governor Andrew Cuomo, this public hearing is being conducted using telephone conference and video conference. Participants have accessed this public hearing through a Zoom registration or by watching the live stream on our YouTube channel, which can be found at nasaidalive.org. If you are participating via Zoom, the agency encourages all interested parties to participate and as such has reserved certain points in today's meeting for public comment. If you do choose to make a comment, you will do so by selecting the raise hand icon on your device. Once you select the icon, you will have the opportunity to speak when your name is announced. Please note that this is a moderated hearing and at times you may hear me speaking directly to our moderator, Catherine Fee, Chief Marketing Officer and Director of Business Development for the agency. Also note that this hearing is being both live streamed and recorded. In addition, we have a stenographer present who will be transcribing this hearing so we can add the transcript of this hearing to the public record. Interested parties may also submit written comments, which will be included within the public hearing records. Written comments may be sent to my attention, Harry Coughlin, Chief Executive Officer at 1 West Street, 4th Floor, New York, Mineola, New York, 11501, or via email to info at nassauida.org. All written comments will need to be submitted to the agency by noon, Thursday, March 18th, in order to be incorporated into the public comment file in time for that evening's meeting of the agency's board. Public comments will be shared with the agency board at its meeting on March 18th, starting at approximately 6.45 p.m. when the project may be considered. This is a public hearing pursuant to section 859-A of the New York General Municipal Law as amended with respect to a project of the agency for Amazon.com Services LLC, a limited liability company organized and existing under the laws of the state of Delaware and authorized to conduct business in the state of New York as a foreign limited liability company. And Syosset Park Development LLC, a limited liability company organized and existing under the laws of the state of Delaware and authorized to conduct business in the state of New York as a foreign limited liability company, which have presented an application for financial assistance to the agency, which application requests that the agency consider undertaking a project consisting of the following. A, one, the acquisition of an interest in an approximately 39 acre parcel of land located at the Northeast corner of Robbins Lane and Miller Place, Syosset, Town of Oyster Bay, Nassau County, New York. Section 15, Block H, Lots 251 and 252. Two, the construction of a one-story, 204,175 square foot building on the land, together with related improvements to the land, including surface parking spaces. Three, the acquisition of certain furniture, fixtures, machinery, and equipment necessary for the completion thereof, all of the foregoing for use by the application, applicant as a warehouse distribution center facility. B, the granting of certain financial assistance within the meaning of section 854.14 of the general municipal law with respect to the foregoing in the form of potential exemptions or partial exemptions from real property taxes mortgage recording taxes, and sales and use taxes. And C, the lease, license, or sale of the project facility to the applicant or such other entity as may be designated by the applicant and agreed upon by the agency. The project facility would be initially owned, operated, and or managed by the applicant or such other entity as may be designated by the applicant and agreed upon by the agency. The company would receive financial assistance from the agency in the form of potential exemptions or partial exemptions from real property taxes, sales and use taxes, and mortgage recording taxes. Notice of this public hearing was published in Newsday, the Nassau edition, on March 4th, 2021, and provided to the chief executive officer of each county, city, town, village, school district, and other affected tax jurisdiction within which the project facility is located by letter dated March 4th, 2021. The purpose of this hearing is to provide an opportunity for all interested parties to present their views 
orally or in writing with respect to the project and or the granting of the financial assistance. Please note that this is solely a hearing for the agent to, to agency to receive comments from the public. It is not an opportunity for questions and answers, nor a dialogue. Neither the agency nor the applicant are required to respond to questions at this hearing. Remarks are, remarks are limited to three minutes per speaker, and each attendee has one opportunity to speak. Please start your comment by stating your full name with spelling and address for the record. Before we move to public comment, we will first turn to Mr. Dan Deegan with the firm of Forcelli Deegan Toronto LLP, who is counsel to the applicant and will make a brief presentation on behalf of the applicant. Mr. Deegan? Yes, thank you, Mr. Coughlin. Uh, good afternoon. You can hear me okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Always good to confirm. Uh, yeah, as you said, um, my name is Dan Deegan. I'm with the law firm Forcelli Deegan Toronto, the attorney for the applicant. I also have with me on this call from the applicant, Mr. Brad Griggs, who's the Senior Manager for Economic Development for Amazon. Say hi to Brad there. Uh, so it, just, I'm also gonna um, tell you when to change the pages on the slide as I go through. So um, you can change it right now uh, to the next page, Catherine. And then change again. Okay, you know, so as we just heard, and I think we all know, the project before this IDA board is the construction of an approximately 200,000 square foot state-of-the-art distribution facility on Robbins Lane in Syosset. Uh, the proposed use is for by Amazon as a last mile delivery facility. Uh, as anyone in Nassau County or Long Island knows, uh, this site has had quite the legacy. Uh, it's been, it's a 39 acre site that's been vacant since the 1980s. It was previously the home of Cerro Wire, which was a um, pretty substantial industrial operation, but it's been vacant since the uh, 1980s. It's left behind a legacy of environmental issues, visual blight, failed development attempts, many of which were controversial in the past. Uh, there's been no jobs, no ac economic activity on this site for decades. There's been very low vacant land taxes uh, being generated and uh, you know, really no economic generation for decades at this point. Um, change, turn the page, please. You know, Amazon's a well-known technology-driven company that has transformed the way that goods are distributed to end users. It operates a customer fulfillment network that's comprised of multiple distribution facilities across the country. Change the slide, please. With the IDA's assistance, Amazon would enter into a long-term lease of a newly constructed state-of-the-art distribution facility. The applicants together would invest over $71 million to develop this long blighted site. Next slide, please. I wanna turn this over to Brad for um, just a very brief description of the proposed operation at the site and um, you know, how it lays out. And then we'll come back to myself. Thanks, Dan, and um, thank you to Executive Director Coglin, Chairman Kessel, and the IDA. Uh, we appreciate the, the time here today to consider our project. What we're looking at, as Dan indicated, is a state-of-the-art last-mile di delivery station or distribution center for our products. So uh, this facility would be the last place that an Amazon package would arrive before it hits your business or, or doorstep. The facility operates in a manner in which these packages are brought uh, vi via line haul or 53 foot tractor trailers, uh, you know, 18 wheeler trucks to the site. That is the area demarcated in red, uh, predominantly off of the LIE service road into the site where they would be packages would, would be unloaded and sorted by Amazon employees. That is the yellow area there to the right of the facility as you're looking at the plan in front of you. The Amazon employees would sort the packages usually using material handling equipment, conveyance systems to sort them into delivery routes. Beginning at about 10 a.m., the van delivery drivers would arrive on site parking in the upper right-hand corner of the facility there in their personal vehicles. The area in blue demarcates where the vans would be stored overnight. We would anticipate the first wave of vans to exit this facility at about 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, they head out one time and then return in the evening after the rush hour period at about 7, 7.30. The first wave of vans would return to the site. 
Those delivery service vans are third-party independent contractors handling our delivery routes. So in addition to the jobs we're talking about here today, directly associated or employed by Amazon, this site would also indirectly lead to uh, employment at correlated to this site for several hundred van drivers and management for our delivery service partners that we would anticipate to be small businesses, logistics companies, and entrepreneurs in the Nassau County region. So appreciate the time here to walk uh, those here in the public through our operations. We've already provided a much more detailed uh, overview of our operations during the preliminary board meeting. So I'll pass it back over to Dan, and then if there are any questions, uh, happy to answer those. Thank you, Brad. Did you change the slide? Yes. So this project is fully zoning compliant. In January of this year, the Town of Oyster Bay granted site plan approval and issued negative declaration for secret review purposes. Our building permits are currently being processed. As we all know, this property has had a legacy of environmental contamination and issues. It's been designated a brownfield site, which is under the jurisdiction of the New York State DEC. Over the decades, there have been numerous test testing samples and efforts at uh, remedial actions. Um, more recently, in connection with this project and after an extensive process, including public hearings and input, the DEC is currently considering a proposed plan to address these issues at the site once and for all as part of the construction of this project. A plan, by the way, that would add significant costs to the redevelopment of the site. That DEC determination is expected shortly and no construction can start without that approval. Please turn the page. Oh, maybe you already did, okay. Uh, you know, in an effort to inform the community of the plans for this site, the applicant and the team, we've reached out and met with County Legislator Drucker We've met with local civic associations, attended their meetings. Uh, we've met with local labor leaders. And we've also met with the school district and their representatives and had uh, constructive um, you know, dialogue with each one of them. Next page. This project will have a tremendous positive impact, especially in these COVID, COVID challenge times. It will create 200 to 250 high paying construction jobs. It'll create a minimum of 150 full-time employees at the site, including 25 management jobs. In addition, as just referenced by Brad, it's gonna create hundreds of delivery service providers, many of which will work for newly formed delivery service companies. Next page. However, given the high cost of construction on Long Island and in general, given the high cost of addressing the environmental legacy of this site, also, given the historic volatility of real estate taxes in Nassau County, and very importantly, the need to justify the high costs of this development of, of this site compared to others in the region internally at the company, the applicant is seeking this IDA's assistance. It should be noted that Amazon currently already services its customers in this area through an existing network of distribution. But this presents an opportunity to attract a new $71 million capital investment here in this community and the tremendous positive economic activities that go along with these proposed operations. Next page. This request for assistance should not be viewed as a tax break or a tax cut. Rather, the construction of this building creates a new tax base that does not exist today. The request of the applicant is to have a 15 year pilot that phases in these new taxes over a period of time in order to make the property given its high cost, financially attractive and financially feasible. Current taxes on the property are $931,000 a year, and they have historically been at a relatively low level because it's been vacant. Uh, the proposed pilot that's being considered, asked to be considered by the IDA, starts at $1.2 million, an immediate increase even before the commencement of construction, and ultimately over 15, that 15 years works its way up to close to $3 million a year by year 15. Without this project, that current $931,000 will continue with just normal cost of living increases. And uh, that is a real possibility given the decades that this property is laid fallow. Um, finally, you know, just to complete the uh, record, we are also requesting a sales tax exemption on the construction materials and a partial mortgage reporting tax exemption on the, uh, on the financing in connection with the project. Uh, that being said, Mr. Coghlan, I turn it back over um, to the public portion of the hearing. 
And thank, thank you, you Mr. Deegan. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Before we move to the public comment period, we will hear from Agency Chairman Richard Kessel. However, if you do wish to make comment following Mr. Kessel's remarks, uh, you may start selecting the raise hand icon now and you will be placed into the queue. Uh, Mr. Chairman, please proceed. Hi, uh, Harry, thank you and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Richard Kessel, I'm chairman of the IDA board. And I, I, first I wanna welcome everyone participating um, in this process, whether you're for the project, against the project, or wanna learn about the project, this is an important part of uh, our democracy to participate um, and to state our opinions respectfully to each other. Um, I have been contacted by several people over the last week or so, a couple by email, a couple by telephone. Um, and I, I just wanna make a few things clear so people understand what this is and what it isn't. Um, this is a hearing. It, it, there is uh, it, there is no vote by the IDA board today at this hearing. Um, and some of the IDA board members, and I think we have a terrific board, um, are watching uh, the hearing. Every IDA board members, and there are seven of us, um, will receive a transcript of all of your comments, whether they're on the record today or they're submitted by email or in writing. And um, the IDA board, ultimately will vote on uh, the project following this hearing. Um, a couple of uh, points that were raised by people uh, to me, I just want to explain briefly. Number one, uh, the question is, you know, why uh, didn't we do this at night? Um, and, you know, there are some people who might be uh, working and want to have an opportunity to speak about this project. And I think that's uh, common sense and makes sense. Uh, so I want to uh, indicate, and by the way, there are a few people who called me and said that we should have done it earlier in the day. Why I got I had someone who asked me, why can't we do it at noon? Uh, everyone has a different opinion. But let me assure you that you will be heard. Um, uh, obviously, this hearing, uh, you uh, can make uh, comments for or against the project. Um, uh, furthermore, this is on currently on the agenda for our board meeting which is this Thursday night, um, starting at uh, 6.30, although the IDA portion starts closer to seven. And um, if you don't have the opportunity to speak today, don't wanna speak today, or are unavailable today, you will be given the opportunity to speak to the IDA, IDA board on Thursday night. So for those people that are working today, but wanna comment, again, whatever position you take, uh, at night, you will be able to do that um, uh, on Thursday night. The, the other, a couple of other points uh, to make, uh, people have raised uh, the issue of the DEC. And I wanna just tell you, I actually brought this, uh, uh, I have read all of the comments uh, that were submitted uh, uh, to the DEC in their process. And I wanna thank Kevin McKenna for sending me uh, uh, those letters and comments. I have distributed them uh, to all of the IDA board members uh, so that they can read them as well. Um, obviously, the DEC has not made a decision um, and um, no action uh, will be finalized um, until we receive a decision from the DEC. And if, if, if the IDA board decides to go forward with the project, um, the project will not be able to be finalized and closed um, without a DEC decision. Uh, so I wanna make sure that people know that we, we're not environmentalists, we don't make environmental decisions, but um, respecting uh, uh, some of the concerns raised about the uh, uh, contamination at, at the property um, and what the DEC is likely to do um, uh, while we are continuing the process going forward um, in the end, this project cannot be supported by the IDA without a DEC decision uh, that is favorable. That's an important point to make. Um, the, the other uh, a couple of points that people have raised, and, and I think, again, everyone makes a, a good point, um, and that is uh, the IDA is not deciding whether or not this project goes forward. Um, those decisions have primarily already been made 
uh, by various entities in the town of Oyster Bay. And I know that uh, uh, the town itself, uh, uh, Supervisor um, Saladino and others in town government have looked at this closely. And obviously um, there have been permits uh, uh, and other things that have been uh, uh, allowed and approved by the town. Uh, the IDA is limited to uh, the financial assistance that being, that's being requested. And I think that's an important point. Uh, another thing that's been asked, and I think it's a legitimate uh, question, is why are you cutting their taxes? Um, the IDA never, never cuts taxes. I know sometimes you read in the paper uh, headlines that say we're, we're cutting taxes, but we don't. Uh, some IDAs do cut taxes. We don't. Uh, and in fact, as Dan Deegan uh, pointed out, I've got some of the numbers here. Um, the fact is that the uh, if we approve the pilot agreement package that's currently been negotiated, the amount of money that the localities will receive is far greater than what they are currently receiving in taxes on vacant land. Uh, and I think that's an important point. Um, the, all, the other thing I want to indicate is why are we doing it virtually? Um, and uh, I do understand that. I wish we could all be together. I'm certainly not afraid of, of being together with however uh, many people there are. But unfortunately, we're in a very difficult time right now with COVID. And, um, you know, I think that to have had a, an in-person uh, uh, hearing at this point would be uh, dangerous. Um, and, you know, could result in, in, in the spread of uh, the virus and something that we don't want to happen. I don't like doing things virtually. Our board has been meeting virtually for almost a year. And all of us, you know, feel bad about that. But this is how we have to conduct business right now. And someone asked the question after that, well, why don't we just put this off um, for a few months? And the answer is because we need to continue to conduct business. And whether we uh, approve this or not, um, there are hundreds and hundreds of jobs at stake here. And uh, people need work right now. And um, uh, so I see, uh, I understand uh, the desire to do this in person, um, but we are doing projects all the time that uh, uh, are virtual. I am hopeful in the next couple of months that as more people get vaccinated, and I hope everyone that's uh, participating in this will consider getting vaccinated, it's important, that we can do these kinds of things in person. Uh, but this is not done for any other purpose other than uh, to continue to do business. And I think that's critically important. Uh, finally, uh, I just wanna indicate, and I've spoken to a number of people uh, over the last week or two, some who uh, uh, vigorously oppose it, some who uh, vigorously support it, um, and uh, everyone is entitled to their opinion. Uh, and, and I think the only thing I ask is please be respectful of uh, uh, people who have spoken or, or do speak um, going forward. I think it's really important. Um, I wish that, again, we could do this in person, but having said that, um, uh, please uh, make your comments respectful um, I don't think we want to be in a position where we're, you know, uh, criticizing people personally. With that, I want to thank everyone for your participation. I can assure you that myself and the entire IDA board uh, that, uh, that will be meeting and discussing this will listen to everything you say or write to us. As I said, I've read all of the comments and letters. Uh, and um, we will continue to do that. We want to hear you. Thank you very much. And I'll turn it back to uh, 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 staff, uh, ha Harry and Catherine, so we can go through the list. And by the way, I just also want to again thank our staff. Uh, this is a lot of work that goes into this. We first began negotiating and talking with uh, uh, Amazon uh, months and months ago. This isn't something we're rushing all of a sudden to do. And I want to thank all of our staff, uh, Harry and Danielle and Catherine um, and our council for the great work that they've done. Thank you and I'm ready to proceed. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now ready to commence the public comment period. Once again, please select the raise hand icon. You will be added to the queue. Comments are limited to three minutes. For your benefit, you will see a timer on the screen so you can gauge the length of your comments and please start your comments with your full name and address for the record. Um, Catherine, do we have anyone in the queue for comment? Uh, yes, sir. Our first speaker is uh, Ralph Catapano. Ralph, can you please state your name again for the record? Mr. Catapano, you may be muted. Are you calling Mr. Ralph or me? Mr. Catapano? Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Please Ralph. proceed. I noticed that. All right. Um, he's saying that he's not Mr. Catapano, even though his name is appearing that way. Um, I do see that Legislator Arnie Drucker has raised his hand to speak. Legislator, are you with us? I'm here. You hear me? We can. Hi. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. Um, first of all, I want to thank you, Chairman Kessel, for allowing me this opportunity to address the IDA. And I applaud you, your board, and your staff for your diligent and conscientious efforts and consideration on behalf of all taxpayers in Nassau County. I also want to thank Dan Deegan and the members of the Syosset Park uh, Development and Amazon uh, who graciously met with me and gave me their time to uh, explain this project uh, from its early stages. I appreciate that. Um, I'd like to offer my thoughts on the application before you by, by Syosset Park Development and, and Amazon concerning the property at 305 Robbins Lane in Syosset. Let me begin by stating that the health and safety of our residents remain my top priority and must remain the top priority of all who possess the authority to render the decisions affecting the future of this site. I fully expect that any final plans to develop the site must satisfy the comprehensive environmental analysis that produces an appropriate and acceptable plan for remediating threats to land, water, and air quality as mandated by the DEC, along with the residents of this community. To be clear, nothing would make me happier than to see this problematic blighted site be developed, which has been the source of such acrimony and conflict for decades. I know I've lived in this community my whole life, so I'm well aware of, the, of this conflict. But the development must be the right project, done the right way for the future of our community. While I appreciate many of the efforts made by the developer to prevent and mitigate against any quality of life concerns in terms of noise, pollution, and traffic, and I like the idea of this last mile destination spot, but I still have concerns that the hundreds of trucks that will be picking up packages every day and then going through residential neighborhoods along Robbins Lane and Birchwood Park, and that can't be. These trucks must enter and exit the same way the trailers do throughout the night, which was designed to not disrupt the quality of life of the residential community. I'm also very cognizant of the obligation on the developer to remediate this site in the safe effective and lawful manner promulgated by the New York State DEC. This remediation must be done so there is zero disruption of any toxins or contaminants in the soil. And I know that the DEC will be monitoring this project very carefully. But I'm also perplexed by why anyone would think it's necessary or appropriate to give a trillion dollar corporation pilot tax breaks that would be funded by Nassau taxpayers while we continue to navigate what I pray is the final stages of an economic downturn caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and hardworking Nassau County residents and small business owners are still struggling to pay property taxes, sales taxes, and mortgages. In addition, Amazon's labor practices and their outward hostility to organized labor are a glaring red flag to me. News articles recently covering an ongoing unionization vote in Bessemer, Alabama, 
are replete with accounts of the hardball tactics Amazon has deployed. Do we really want to endorse these type of wage depressing, union busting labor practices by rewarding Amazon with the tax dollars of Nassau County residents? I certainly don't. In conclusion, I hope this application, because of the lack of merit on its face and the abject unworthiness of the help of Nassau County taxpayers. Thank you very much for your time. Arnie, thank you. Um, I, I just want to commend you for your interest uh, that you've taken in this project. I think people don't realize the efforts that, uh, that you make and other uh, legislators make on projects like this. You asked questions, uh, made comments, made good suggestions, and I, I really appreciate all of your input and your hard work and diligence. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Legislator. Catherine, do we have anyone else in the queue at this time? Yes, sir. We have Laura Schultz. Laura, are you with us? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, good afternoon to you all. Uh, I'm Laura Schultz. I live at 22 Barber Drive, Syosset. I serve as the president of Residence for More Beautiful Syosset. We are a 501c3 nonprofit civic organization in the Syosset area. It is unimaginable and unconscionable that a company that makes billions of dollars a year in profits has presented an application for financial aid to the Nassau County IDA. Syosset taxpayers suffering under the hardships posed by the COVID-19 pandemic and trying to pay their Nassau County property taxes and their Nassau County sales taxes are the ones who need this tax relief at this time. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Ms. Schultz. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Catherine, is there anyone else in the queue? You are muted, Catherine. I apologize. Yes, we have Tracy Frankel. Tracy, are you with us? Ms. Frankel, you may be muted. Can you hear me? I can now. You okay. may proceed again. Wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity to provide comment on the tax. Tracy? Ms. Frankel, we lost you again. Can you hear me now? Yes, we'll let you start over, please. Okay, Chairman Kessel, thank you. Members of the IBA board, Chief Executive Coughlin, thank you for the opportunity to provide comment on the tax abatements proposed for the Syosset Park Warehouse development at 305 Robbins Lane and the ultimate beneficiary of those abatements, Amazon. I'm Tracy Frankel, president of the Syosset Board of Education. As we wrote to you last June in response to Chairman Kessel's remarks in Newsday, we are opposed to using property tax incentives to underwrite the operating costs of Amazon at the expense of the residents of the Syosset School District. What we've learned in the intervening months has done little to relieve our skepticism. Chairman Kessel has previously stated that Amazon means jobs, 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 and it's undeniable that there will be temporary construction jobs to build the warehouse. But the IDA is considering a 15 year tax abatement, hopefully in exchange for new permanent job creation. Amazon boxes aren't sitting around undelivered somewhere. So whatever package delivery jobs are needed are already being created even without the IDA's intervention. It's possible that IDA intervention might keep those jobs from being located outside Nassau County. But if that were likely, why does Amazon have a fleet of additional drivers for its Bethpage location operating out of a parking lot on Underhill Road in Syosset? New jobs are already being created and located in Nassau, even without the IDA. Based on the standard valuation services assessment analysis of the property, over the 15 year life of the pilot, the applicant will have saved $8 million in taxes that would otherwise have been due on the improved property. That's money that could have lowered other residents' tax bills. 
Instead, it will be a subsidy of about $53,000 for each of the 150 jobs the applicant claims would be created. The savings to the applicant may even be greater, however. Based upon a review of the assessment and taxes made available by the county, it appears that the applicant just successfully challenged the taxes of the vacant property, lowering the tax bill by over 24% and shifting almost $160,000 per year to other taxpayers in Syosset. The terms reflected in the deviation notice appear to lock in any benefit from a certiorari lowering the, lowering the baseline and locking in that tax shift as well. Although the pilot schedule does call for an annual inflation factor, it won't make up the loss from the tax challenge for at least five years just to get back to where it was in 2019-20. In the meantime, other residents are asked to pick up the slack. If this were a struggling business, hoping to add to the local economy, that would be a more sympathetic story than subsidizing one of the world's most profitable companies. As we've previously written to the IDA, 15-year pilot agreements shield applicants from sharing in the future service costs of the communities they inhabit. School districts periodically borrow to renovate aging facilities. Any entity with a pilot arrangement gets to avoid chipping in their fair share, essentially passing the buck to the rest of the community. Should the IDA move ahead with the subsidy, applicants will sometimes seek to extend pilot agreements, either threatening to exit Nassau or making modest investments that purport to create new jobs. The IDA should make as a precondition of any pilot agreement that it will not extend benefits for jobs already created. And similarly, we believe that the IDA should prevent future exploitation of the arrangement by the applicant. A weak contract can allow the applicant to terminate the pilot agreement early, allowing them to forgo the second half of the pilot payment and avoiding the full year's taxes altogether. The applicant also claims the need for financial assistance, asserting that their development of this property comes with associated costs for remedial actions, given the property's troubled environmental history. We wish that were true. But to our great disappointment, we can't identify any construction costs the applicant proposes to undertake that wouldn't be incurred even if the site was pristine soil. The applicant's preferred remedy is to construct a cap over the impacted soils, but that cap consists of nothing more than the very parking lots and warehouse that comprise the project and thus represents no additional cost. Moreover, we ask the applicant to consider some modest common sense remedial activities, additional air monitoring, soil testing adjacent to a cyanide hotspot, targeted soil removal where contaminants are concentrated, and all have been rejected by the applicant to date. In June, Chairman Kessel stated that we will be as creative as we can to lay out the welcome mat. The, ID, the IDA appears anxious to make good on that promise with this plan to forgive Amazon's substantial portion of its fair share of taxes, both now and in the future, as compensation for jobs that would inevitably be created anyway if they don't exist already at a cost of $53,000 per job. That's a pretty generous welcome mat. The IDA should be an engine of economic development not corporate opportunism. And as we wrote in our letter to the IDA last June, it is the board's firm position that Amazon is not a struggling new business needing financial assistance in the form of a property tax abatement. If the last seven months of study have demonstrated anything, it is how weak the arguments are for further subsidizing this project through tax abatement. We ask the Nassau IDA to deny the applicant's request. Thank you for your time and attention. The district and board reserve the right to make additional comments before the IDA board at its March 13th meeting. Thank you, Ms. Frankel. Just to confirm the next IDA board meeting is March 18th. Thank you for that correction. Uh, uh, Tracy, uh, thank you. And, and also uh, uh, Laura uh, uh, Schultz, who I respect, you did a great job there. It was good to uh, hear you at least on this. I just, because you, you keep re referencing my name, I just want to make a point. We are not giving Amazon a tax abatement, or nor are we lowering the taxes. If we decide to go forward with this, the pilot schedule, and you're correct, Tracy, it's uh, over a 15 year period, the numbers that, uh, that our staff has computed, um, they will be paying uh, over the 15 years pilots, which are the same really as taxes, they're in lieu of taxes, of $28.8 million. Um, and uh, if they were to pay the taxes currently, which as you correctly point out, were uh, uh, recently reduced, um, it would the revenue would be $16.4 million. 
So in fact, if we were if the pilots, we were to do the 15 year pilots, uh, it would be a tax benefit to the community of uh, uh, over $12 million over the 15 years. So we're not abating taxes or reducing them. We're actually increasing revenues to the residents of the county, the town, uh, and uh, the residents who pay school taxes in, in, uh, in Syosset. And I think that it's a misnomer to think that, you know, we're, we're uh, doing something that's gonna hurt other taxpayers. If we did this, and we haven't decided whether to do it or not, it will actually increase revenues and help alleviate uh, uh, the tax pressure in that community. And I, I think that's an important point to make. And I, I get frustrated at the IDA um, uh, because many times people keep saying we're lowering taxes and we're simply not doing that. The other thing I just want to point out because you raise it and it's a good point. I think you made a lot of good points. Um, and that is that while there was a, a, a recent uh, lowering of assessment um, as part of the negotiations, uh, we would actually ignore the lower assessment and pilot payments at the former higher rate. So if, if we didn't go forward with this, then what happened is that you would pay less taxes because of the, uh, the uh, win uh, uh, by the uh, applicants of, of a lower assessment. Um, the IDA had worked out in negotiations with uh, Amazon and Simon Properties that rather than start at that lower number, we start at the original higher number and then go up every year through that. The bottom line from a tax, and I'm just giving you numbers. I'm not saying, you know, we should or shouldn't do this. And I think you bring up excellent points. The bottom line for the taxpayers is under uh, an IDA uh, package that's been negotiated with Amazon, the taxpayers would receive a net benefit of over $12 million over what they currently would pay if that property were vacant. Just wanted to make that point. But, and by the way, I think your letters are, I, I don't agree with everything in them, but they're done. I actually have one of your letters at the top of my pile over here. And um, I just want to assure uh, the school district that, you know, I understand there are always issues with school districts, but the bottom line is that the residents that pay their school taxes in your area are going to get a, a reasonable benefit, a higher uh, amount of money than they would under normal circumstances. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you also, Laura, for love to hear from you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Catherine, at this time, do we have anyone else in the queue? Yes, sir. We have a Matthew Arasich. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. And, and um, I, quite frankly, um, I will echo uh, Chairman Kessel's uh, comments on that last speaker. Uh, very clear, very concise, uh, and very enlightening that people can put together, you know, a true explanation of what they're trying to achieve. However, uh, I do have a difference of opinion, um, but quite frankly, I'm going to move forward and just explain where I am. So my name is Matthew Arasich, President of the Building and Construction Trades Council for Nassau and Suffolk Counties. I find that Amazon's plan for fulfillment and distribution center built on a former serial wire site in Robbins Lane and Syosset is well conceived. The project brings a specific local investment to the town of Oyster Bay and stimulates economic development, all while creating opportunities for our skilled union tradesmen and tradeswomen on Long Island. I praise the efforts of Nassau County Executive Laura Curran and town of Oyster Bay Supervisor Joe Saladino for working in tandem to make the most out of this long vacant property that will mutually benefit both the county and the town. Amazon's new single level distribution facility spanning over 200,000 square feet will create hundreds of union construction jobs and later provide permanent employment for scores of Long Islanders who as a result of the pandemic are out of work. There were so many failed attempts to redevelop this project over the last three decades. Many plans included a residential component, but each of these plans faced tremendous opposition on every occasion. As president of the council, it took an enormous amount of time and effort to put this together. We're nearly finished. And we just found out that there was a communication breakdown between the contractor and a construction manager. And we're extremely confident that we can secure the last contract for all the trades. It was an amazing feat for everyone to come together on this initiative. 
And I wanna thank everybody involved in making this project become a reality. Working men and working women wanna provide for their families. And thanks to County Executive Curran, Town of Oyster Bay Saladino, and the IDA, we're moving forward with this important project. The successful relationship between the Building Trades Council and team at the Nassau County IDA proves that we can attract new business to Long Island and get things done the right way with union labor ensuring that families and working families fully share any economic opportunities that are here at home. Without development, we will undoubtedly experience further loss of jobs and opportunities for Nassau County residents. So that's why everyone should go ahead and spur all kinds of development because we want to attract new business and create more opportunities to expand the tax base. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Arasich. Catherine, is there anyone else remaining? Yes, we now have John Cush. John, can I tell you to state your name and address for the record, please? Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is John Cush. I'm a business agent for Iron Workers Local 361, located at 8919 97th Avenue, Ozone Park, New York. And I'm speaking on behalf of the Iron Workers Union representing Nassau County and the hundreds of members that live in Nassau County. Good evening, everybody. Um, on the surface, this looks like a no brainer. I mean, no new residents would be moving into the neighborhood, burdening school districts or the local infrastructure, and it would be adding more taxes to the local base along with new jobs. But I'm speaking today to ask Amazon to use the local building trades unions on the entirety of this project on these jobs. My members have been hurting since the pandemic started and everybody still has to pay their own taxes and send their kids to school and do the day to day things that they need to do. And uh, since the pandemic started, we've been hurting pretty good. Guys are losing their coverage. And it would be a shame if an out of town contractor came in here and, you know, we local people here in Nassau County watched a trillion dollar company get tax breaks while they're still paying their fair share of taxes and don't get an opportunity to work on the project. So I appreciate the time to speak on this and thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cush, for joining us this afternoon. Catherine? Sir, now we have. Uh, Jack Mashkut. Jack, are you with us? Sorry, you may need to unmute your microphone. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Please start. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. My name is Jack Mikit. I'm a business representative for the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 25. The IBW represents several thousand working families here on Long Island. I'm here to speak in favor of the applicant's application. This former serial wire has been a blighted site for many decades, and I, th I think it's the board's responsibility to approve this application. The project will create hundreds of high paying construction jobs as well as hundreds of full time employees for Amazon. Coming off the, the tail end of a pandemic, this project will generate the much needed tax revenue, creating secondary and tertiary spending to help stimulate the economy. The project's benefits to the community outweigh any concern or reservations that may have been raised. Once, you know, once again, Local 25 is in full support of this project. Thank you for your time and opportunity to speak. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, sir. Catherine, is anyone next? Yes, we have Sean McCaffrey. Mr. McCaffrey. Thank you all for the opportunity to speak to you. My family and I lived in Syosset for 35 years. My last two years of elementary school, when my school was closed, was spent at South Grove. So Robbins Lane, you have this blighted site, poisoned. Then you have an unregulated town dump that closed the year before I went to the school. Then you have a school like in Brookhaven, many cancer cases that they built on the outskirts of the dump. That's absolutely brilliant. This may very well be our last chance to fix this. They capped, similar to what they want to do here, the town dump. People are still dying of various cancers. I have a list of almost 700 cases of cancer. My sister next to me, all four daughters were afflicted by it. One survived, she's a year older than me. 
the same age as the former commissioner of the Nassau County Police Department whose daughter died of cancer from that very same school, the same area where another girl that graduated the same year had cancer, the same graduating class of a fellow that had testicular cancer in ninth grade. The cancer is rampant. I spoke with an 800 person crowd at the Syosset High School. All kinds of politicians were there hearing me. Most of the people that have passed or been taken ill either sat in that same room or had family there. This must be fixed before it's covered. If it works, wonderful. It doesn't work because people are still dying. People that moved into the neighborhood around there after the dump was closed, decades after the dump was closed, some houses have had two different owners afflicted by cancer there. There are many streams that run underground. Who knows where they're taking this to? You think that Beth Page is bad? This could be exponentially worse. The same company that brought you Love Canal, dump there, Hooker. Robbins Lane was lined, as was Underhill Boulevard, with defense contractors during the nuclear age. The cure to that was bury it. There's the dump. What did Steero do? Well, they destroyed swaths of land in their native Peru. They came here, and who knows how much sludge, I'm hearing figures of hundreds of thousands of gallons annually were put there. The ground glowed. People that rode them dirt bikes and everything back there speak of losing a boot, whatever, and it's coming up in a different color. The jobs, there are hundreds of cars parked on Underhill Boulevard. Is that even two miles away? Are those the same jobs? If so, that's not creation. That's relocation. The tax difference they're going to pay to 1.2 mil is barely 10%. The 28 mil they're going to pay is less than 2 million a year. The contractors and everything that are speaking, what are they going to do when the toxic dust starts kicking up and their people start dying? This is an abomination. Something has to be done. I'm not against Amazon. I'm against building on this land that is terribly poisoned. There's a massive carnage. I'm a retired member of the NYPD. If there was a bullet known to hurt 700 people and that bullet was not found, it would be front page news and there would be a, a lot of questions being asked. They're not. This is being swept over the rug under the rug, this carnage is going to continue. It's not taken back. They should not get any sort of tax adjustment, whatever word you want to use, at all. Thank you. Mr. McCaffrey, thank you for your time and your comments. Catherine, is there anyone else in the queue? Yes, we have Kevin McKenna. Mr. McKenna. Mr. McKenna, you may be muted. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can, sir. Please proceed. Okay. Um, let me get right to the point. Um, Legislator Drucker covered uh, a whole lot of points, and he, he made an emphasis about how his main concern is for the community, yet he has failed to call out Supervisor Saladino, who promised independent testing on 150 Miller Boulevard, which runs contiguous with this site. How the IDA could be having this hearing tonight prior prior to the decision by the DEC is unbelievable. Now, Chairman Kessel at the beginning of the meeting said that he made contradictory statements. He said that after the meeting tonight, the board will vote. Then he went ahead and he said that the residents that can't make this, this meeting now can speak on Thursday. Well, why would the residents want to speak on Thursday if you said you're going to vote tonight? But let me go on. Mr. Mr. Tracy Mr. Frank McKenna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pause you for one second and we'll give you back the time. Uh, just to be clear and to clarify Mr. Kessel's earlier comments, there is no vote today by the board. The That's final not what he vote, said. I, I understand that. I'm clarifying if there was a misunderstanding or miscommunication. I am making you aware and for our audience to be aware that no vote is occurring today. It will not happen until the evening of okay. Thursday night. Very good. You can I proceed. find it very, I, I find it that it's very, first of all, let, let me let me get this in right now so that you don't cut me off in my three minutes. I don't want to miss a saying this. I want to go on the record right now and let Nassau County know that if this goes ahead, if the, if the IDA board, and by the way, I appreciate everything that the IDA board does, but I'm telling you right now, that if this is voted positive, I will be with others. We will be filing an Article 78 proceeding 
against the Nassau County IDA because you are conflicted. You have a county executive, you have a county executive who took a $25,000 donation from Simon Properties, who is the applicant, and you have two board members, and they might be very fine gentlemen, but you have two board members on the IDA that should be recusing themselves because they are union representatives. And no matter what we say, no matter what anybody says, those two board members are going to vote yes because they want jobs for their union. So I, I, I respectfully request that the two, it might be three board members that are, that are connected to unions that you, that you um, recuse yourself from this. And Chairman Kessel, you need to recuse yourself from this. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you yesterday on telephone calls, which were recorded, you have already told residents that you are approving this project. You told the resident yesterday that if you don't approve the project, that Amazon is going to pack up their toys and go home. Why don't you just tell us, Chairman Kessel, and with all due respect to you, you have already made up your mind, your whole tone tonight. You are advocating for this project and you haven't even had a vote yet. And let me just go on to say also that I cannot believe that legislator Drucker and that you, Mr. Kessel, that you have not made public the five page letter that was sent to you by the Syosset School District. Legislator Drucker, the fact that you haven't made that public to your constituents is totally irresponsible. And I want to also say that Matt, the union representative, Matt, a few minutes ago, he just talked about how he appreciates the efforts of Laura Curran. Of course, you appreciate the, the efforts of Laura Curran. She got a $25,000 donation from, from Simon Properties. And you appreciate the efforts of Supervisor Saladino? Supervisor Saladino, on the record and in the local newspapers two months ago, he told the Syosset residents that finally the property is going to be cleaned up. How can Supervisor Saladino make a statement that the property is going to be cleaned up when the DEC still has not made a decision on the type of remedy? How could he make that statement? He lied. He lied to the public. Mr. McKenna, I appreciate your comments. I want to ask you to wrap it up. I did give you back I'm some gonna time. I'm going to wrap it up, and I, appre I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Mr. Kessel, you talked a little while ago earlier about a democracy, and you have this meeting on, a, on, a, on an afternoon, on a Tuesday. Why is that? To make it convenient? for the unions that you're in bed with and not and not allow the public to participate and you can't have this meeting in, a, in an evening, it's disgusting. And I'm telling you right now, I will serve you with an Article 78 costing the Nassau taxpayers money and I will, I will make public, I will make public the donation that Laura Curran has gotten from this applicant and Laura Curran put you, Mr. Kessel, in your position and you are doing what she wants to be done and you've already made a decision. So why don't you just tell us all that right now? All right, Mr. McKenna, I appreciate your time. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Catherine, at this point, is there anyone else Catherine, remaining? Uh, hold, uh, Harry, hold on one second. Kevin, Certainly. first of all, thank you for your kind words to everyone. Um, uh, and, you know, uh, I've tried to work with you, uh, but I have to, I have to say a couple of things uh, about, uh, you know, your uh, criticisms personally of some people that I work with and that I've known for years. And the misinformation is just, I just can't let it go. First of all, Laura Curran um, uh, is one of the finest public servants I know. She receives campaign contributions. I, I note that you're running for office this year as Oyster Bay supervisor. Um, and uh, people that run for office get contributions. That in no way has any impact uh, either on Laura Curran uh, or on the IDA. Uh, we are uh, make our judgments based on the facts and uh, uh, where we think things should lie. And, and, and I have to say, I, I worked for six governors in my life. 
um, a lot of them from you, Carrie, through Andrew Cuomo. And uh, I, I'm privileged uh, to work with uh, a county executive, Laura Curran. I think she's doing a terrific job. And, and the notion that somehow a campaign contribution um, would impact her decision making or ours is absurd. The other thing I have to say is we do have two uh, union people on our board. One of them is Anthony Simon, who represents the Long Island Railroad Workers Union. I'm not sure quite uh, what that has to do with this project. Absolutely nothing. The other, Chris Fusco, um, used to head the Carpenters Union. These two people have independent judgment and advocates. And I would say that for everyone on the IDA board. Um, the board volunteers its time. Uh, we don't get paid. Um, and we do things case by case. Um, and we do it with integrity and honesty. And um, as far as myself, um, I did speak to uh, um, uh, a, a couple of constituents. By the way, one who called me yesterday who said, why aren't we doing this in the morning? Everyone has their own opinion. But uh, I will tell you that I, I never said that I was going to vote for it. What I said was that if we didn't approve it, it's likely that Amazon would uh, not locate there and we would lose hundreds of jobs. And that is the truth. Whether that is a deciding factor or not, we'll see. But I, I would just give you a suggestion. I like you. You're, you know, we, we've communicated by email um, and um, I respect you. And uh, a lot of the things that you've done in civic advocacy. Um, uh, but I think that when you uh, talk about people, you shouldn't personalize it so much. That's just not right. And um, it's not becoming of you or anyone else who does it. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Chairman. Uh, Catherine, at this time, I'm gonna ask if there are any other additional attendees who have not spoken yet? No, sir, not at this time. Thank you very much. Seeing none, on behalf of the agency, I would like to thank everyone for attending this public hearing and for their comments with respect to the project and the financial assistance. It is now 4.01 p.m. and I call this hearing to a close. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon.